So what types of data are used in qualitative research? We need to collect data. What types of data are we going to collect to answer the research question? Well, the bread and butter, the most common type of data used in qualitative research consists of interviews, sitting down with people and asking them questions. Now, to, in order to interview people, you have to develop the, the protocol, the interview protocol, the questions that you're going to ask to get people to uh, talk. And there's two ways of doing this. If you want the exact same data from everybody, you'll use a fixed set of questions that doesn't change. For example, when you interview somebody for a job, um, to get good, consistent data, if you want to compare who you're, they're going to uh, higher, you've got to use um, a, a, the same set of questions with, with everybody. But a lot of times when you're trying to explore an issue and not decide between people, the, uh, um, uh, as the study evolves, you'll want to change the questions. Some questions you won't want to ask anymore because you know what the response will be. It'll be either A, B, or C, or something like that. Or, um, but then as you explore things with some people, you'll find out that, oh, I need to develop more questions to ask people. And I really should be asking these things. So the interviews can vary as the uh, study evolves in many uh, uh, situations. Now these interviews should be recorded. You shouldn't rely on taking notes because because of confirmation bias, you'll take notes on things that you already believe. That's easiest to do. We can't really multitask and listen and write at the same time, so we kind of filter things out. And because of our filters, we're going to write down the things that we want to be true or expect to be true, things like that. And we lose lots of information. So we need to record the interviews and then transcribe them, which is painful if you're doing it by hand. I mean, it is really painful for some people. For me, it's like one of the, the worst things that I've ever done in my research career is listen to uh, recordings and try to transcribe them. That's, that's not how I am uh, uh, gifted. But fortunately, there, with the advances of technology, things are getting pretty good. Um, if you have uh, Word 365, that come, Microsoft Word 365, if you go to the online version, um, it will transcribe recorded data. So you can, you can record um, uh, the interview, maybe on your phone or maybe uh, on a Zoom uh, 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 call, something like that. Zoom's real easy because you can both you can get to, when you record, you get both the voice, voice file and the voice and video file. So you just record a Zoom uh, interview that you have with somebody, um, take the, the voice recording, and if you open up Word, 300, Word 365 online, it's got to be the online version. It's got to go through Microsoft's uh, processors. Um, it'll give you a pretty good transcription. It won't be perfect, but it'll separate out the people, and it's 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 far better than even a couple years ago. So you should transcribe the interviews, and that will allow that'll give you the data that you can analyze. Now, another source of interviews, another variety of interviews, are focus groups, and they're essentially group interviews. You have a bunch of people together, and you ask them questions, and you have them discuss it, and as they interact with each other, they'll bring out different things than they would in one-on-one -on -one interviews. Because the dynamics, both emotionally and cognitively, are different than with indiv individual interviews. People will say different things than they would in an individual interview. Now, you can also use surveys, essentially, to interview people. Now, you would think, oh, that's, that's easy. I don't have to spend an hour listening to them. I just give them a survey to fill out. Well, they're not going to do it. People, people like talking. They don't like writing. So they're not going to write something down unless they're extremely motivated. Now, maybe in some organizations, it's the, the, their supervisor is going to um, uh, demand that they fill out a survey, and then you'll get higher participation rates. But generally, people don't like writing, so it's it's hard to get much information, much subjective information from from surveys. So interviews are the 
first big category of types of data used in qualitative research. A second category consists of observations. And that's where you go around an organization or whatever you're studying and take notes and record about what's what what's happening what people are saying what people are doing how they go about doing their job um what you uh um see on the on the walls uh uh when do people rush when do people uh, slow down what's their body posture during uh, uh meetings you you just get as much information as you can from observing what people are doing you can take notes you can do photos you can make videos um all of that provides data that you can analyze to explain what's happening in that uh, during that phenomena or in that organizational context. So we've got interviews, we've got observations, and then we've got also existing materials which contribute to defining the, the culture. Typically, this would be like documents, it would be official documents. The, um, that would range from the employee manual to uh, uh, maybe the articles of incorporation for an organization or job descriptions, all kinds of official documents. Organizations are filled with them. There's also historical documents, decisions that have been made in the past, past job descriptions, all kinds of things from the past. There's advertising, which is very different rather than saying how things should be it's the image that the organization wants to portray to uh, others or any other type of relevant document can give you insights into the organization but the existing materials aren't limited to documents anything that any audio visual materials like photos recording videos that have been produced for the organization that can be a, a source of information into the the culture and the processes that are used within the organization 